RimWorld is a story generator. And today I would like to generate you a story. We're all familiar with the Empire. Shattered. Technologically advanced, but spread across the galaxy. Not truly united. Not truly independent. All working towards the glitter worlds that they aspire to. And today we're going to tell a, a little story about one of their um, further flung colonies that are engaging in some uh, less than scrupulous experiments. They have been experimenting with cloning and hive minds, such as those that they observed in the several insect species upon their planet. And Subject 374, the most promising of their clones so far, has been has been given some uh, free reign is the wrong word. They've been given a test with a few captured tribals and some pre-written information into their brain. They have been tasked to start a colony and build a society based on what they see around them. And the majority of what is around them is insects. Insects and bugs and colonies and hives. And so whatever society they form is going to be something close to that. So with that in mind, we have here my scenario, Bug Splat. In my mod list, Hive Mind, in this series, also called Hive Mind. Do you see a theme? Do you see where this is going? So I've I've created a mod list. I've also saved this scenario and put it with the mod list. So if you want to play with this, um, please do. I I'm actually really proud of this mod list. I actually put some effort into getting it, ordering it, and putting it together so that. It should be as stable as possible. I did a little bit of testing, and from that, it seems like stress-wise, like late game, it shouldn't slow down too much. I was getting, I think I spawned in around 150 to 200 pawns, and I was still getting around 90 ticks per second, which I don't have the best computer, so it was still pretty solid. That was better than the Winston Waves, um, just kind of for reference. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I'm thinking of putting out a video, not like a, a proper video, but like an unlisted video going through all the mods and the settings and how I set all this up in case anyone was interested. Um, if that is something you would like to see, please let me know because that that probably will take me a couple of hours. So it's it's easier to commit to that if I know that someone actually wants to see it. Um, and then I'll just put it as like a link in the video description. Um, yeah, so let me know on that. Uh, our scenario, let me let me open it up here just so I can kind of... This is going to be a challenge run. And there's, there's kind of a lot of layers to this. So I'm going to try and go over them as they come up. But I feel like that video might help understand exactly what's going on here and what my idea was. So yeah, as I said... We've got our little empire, and they're trying to see what would happen if humans or pawns, whatever the heck they are, um, formed a more insect-like society. And so they've taken one of their clones with a huge propensity for learning, and also um, with massive uh, psychic influence, or psi influence, I don't know what they would call it, uh, to kind of control... I'm thinking of like... If you've played StarCraft, like the queens in StarCraft, where they like psionically link to all of their people and, you know, they're independent, but they're also connected. It, I'm sure you know what I mean. It's very sci-fi. Yeah, so we're going to be a tribe. Um, I'm doing five from five just because I've already created the people. I'm going to be using pre-created people, so they will be quite strong, but... Again, I, it's it's coming, don't worry. So arriving by drop pods because the Empire is shuttling us in. We're starting with a decent amount of food and medicine. Well, 
more than a decent amount of food and medicine. And a couple of supplies to help us get our initial base set up. And because obviously the, the focus of this series is on genetic rim, um, I'm starting with all the genetic research because semi-random research is making a comeback and we're going to be playing it as we can't move on to the next tier of research until we complete one. So this most of this is industrial tech. There is one more, which is Spacer, which I haven't put us in for. We'll have to unlock that naturally. But I wanted these because I didn't want to have to wait around for them to show up. So as soon as we're capable, we're going to be using these. The side effect of this is because electricity is required to unlock these, we get electricity as well, which is a little annoying, but I'm just not going to use it until we get there. I We're going to be doing fast research anyway, which you'll see here in a minute. Um, so it it's not that big of a deal, really. And we don't have batteries, so even though we can make power to actually keep things powered, it's actually kind of difficult. It, it Yeah, we're just... My headcanon with this is that they preloaded the clone, Subject 374, uh, with this information. And so as part of that, they had to, you know, upload... They had to know what electricity was to understand how all this worked. And now one of the big things, and this was part of... What I've been considering for a while, but I, I wanted to do a colony where we can't grow anything. So we can't grow food, we can't grow medicine. And when I was testing, the biggest thing or the biggest hurdles I think we're going to have, one is cloth. Cloth is needed for a lot of things, just kind of in general. And if we can't grow it, then we have to buy it or find it or go out and steal someone else's. So that's that's interesting. Um, also, obviously, food, medicine. Just, yeah, it... Obviously, there's like ice sheet playthroughs and such where you eat, you know, people and then you grow in hydroponics. We can't even grow in hydroponics, so... I'm very interested in this. Obviously, we're going to be doing a lot of hunting. And um, I did add in, because of the testing, I did add in smoked meat so that we can preserve meat a little bit better early on, just because it's so hard. We can't refrigerate anything. So even if we can hunt 3,000 meat in the first week, if it all spoils, we're, we're dead. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so we're going to be starting naked. Again, Empire dropping us in, experiment, blah, blah, blah. That is also a problem. It's not a huge one, but uh, I'll, I'll get to it. There's, like I said, there's a lot of layers to this. And then we're starting off, the Empire is going to like us early on. Um, I realized I haven't done anything with Psy powers in a while, so I added in better Psy powers and... I'm not committing to this one right now, but the an idea I had was that we have to take any Empire quests that we receive. And whilst we will have tribal people, so we can do the anima tree linking, we, we can also get Psy powers through here. And I do like the idea of our queen or our leader um, being very psychically powerful and having, like, being ranked as a what is it, a Stellark or a Duke or whatever it is, having a high Empire title uh, from the services they provide. Um, just while I'm here, before I move on, uh, the end game for this, the goal, um, Vanilla Expanded Genetics adds an end game... Um, uh, what's the word? Circumstance? That's not the right word. It, it adds a win condition, which is to create the Arcopede, or Arco Centipede, which I read, I read the Steam page, I don't fully understand how we do it. Basically, I know we have to go out, raid labs, get all the stuff, make, uh, grind up a huge amount of animals, we can make the Arcopede, it, it goes into a womb, there's 15 days, just like every other end game in RimWorld, where you defend it, and then it pops out, and you have pretty much just the ultimate war machine um 
I don't think the game actually ends when you get it, but that's that's the end goal, and that's what we're going to be going for. And I kind of like the idea that we outstrip the Empire and then we turn on them, or maybe, you know, this was the Empire's goal all along, and they've finally created a weapon that will let them reclaim their home worlds and other worlds and every world. So we're going to be playing on Randy. I'm going to start on Strive to Survive. I will push it up. Actually, I'm going to do custom, but we're going to base it on Strive to Survive. We're going to be doing Reload anytime just for crashes and YouTube reasons. But I'm not going to reload unless... Uh, I haven't really thought of this criteria fully, but basically, if we get completely wiped, then I'll reload. If a, if we suffer horrendous losses because of a glitch or a bug, or not bugs, but a bug, a, a code bug, then I'll reload, but otherwise, I, we're just gonna have to... This is meant to be a challenge, and I would actually like to treat it as a challenge, so as much as possible, I'm not going to be reloading. So we're going to do Strive to Survive. And then the only changes we're going to make, I'm going to bump up Research to 175. We are going to take Fast Research in our Ideal Legion as well. So this will go very quickly. Again, the reason being that we have semi-random research, we have to complete essentially all research uh, to progress. Um, and as we're tribal, we get penalties for anything above tribal in our research speed, so this just negates that a little bit. Uh, we're going to leave Scary a rot chance. I'm going to drop enemy death on down to 60. I normally do this, like, between 15 and 25. But between this and Yeo's combat, we end up with a lot of people just left on the ground, and it feels a little GD. Like, it's... It's not. But... It's, it's not really the way RimWorld was designed. You know, in RimWorld, you're meant to have scarcity. You're meant to be forced to take difficult decisions, like who to recruit. Uh, and this is... This is just going to help a little with that. Okay. So, our... Um, I, I don't want to use the seed that I used before. Um... Just it, it honestly it wasn't a great seed, uh, but I just I like being surprised, you know. Okay, so we're gonna do let's do forty five percent. I have more options now because we're using uh, I forget the exact name. It's called Realistic Worlds Continued, something like that. It gives you more options in world generation, and the big one that I wanted this for was the axial tilt. So if you have a high axial tilt, the the discrepancy between summer and winter is a lot bigger. So I, I've only been doing it with this one. I haven't pushed it up all the way. But even with this, the temperature range in a year can go from like minus 40 to 35. It's it's huge. And we're going to do a sparse popular. Well, let's just we'll, we'll bring it down just a little. And as you might have noticed here, if you were paying very close attention, uh, we do have the Skrix uh, race as well as the Apini. Uh, both of these are insect playable races, uh, which add some of their own things uh, in. I don't know how much we'll get to play with them. I'm not starting with any of these, uh, but it seemed appropriate to have them. I've seen a little bit of them in other people's games. Um, and they are tribal, so they will be raiding us early. We have Ignorance is Bliss, so we can't be raided by anyone too high above us. The main reason being that uh, with Yeos, I didn't want Mechanides to be... Mechanides? Mechanoids to be dropping on us when we had, like, bows and arrows. Um, and I did realize in the last series, I messed up mechs, and we didn't see them hardly at all, so I did want to fight some mechs in this one. Just not right away. So Ignorance is Bliss is going to protect us a little bit early on. And we're probably going to be raided by these guys. And I mean, I I would definitely like to recruit some and check out all their fancy things too. And yeah, let's see what kind of planet we have. For a sparse population, that's a lot of people. Which is fine. It's, it's not that big of a deal. And I mean, 
central area is already looking quite appealing. Now we do have map reroll and map preview and geological landforms, um, which is three separate mods, which basically, as you'll see here, will show me what the map looks like before we get there so we can find something interesting. When I was originally planning this, I wanted to do a mountain base, so something like this would have been great. Um, but since we did that with Winston, I, I don't really want to do another mountain base, which is a shame because the geological landforms, um, let me see if I can find just like a, I don't know, a crater. Like, look, like some of these maps that it generates are really cool, like really, really cool. And if you look here, so this is right on the equator. So this is only four to twenty-eight. So I don't. I do want that fluctuating weather. Um, I do want the challenge of. See, this is minus four to thirty-six. What is? I'm trying to work out where the equator is. Um, so minus. See, minus twelve to forty. That's that's insane. Uh, rainforest, no, because don't want to die to disease just in my first day. Okay, so this seems like the equator. So let's go up here. Let's look over here. Um, if we had some friendlier people around. Okay, so these ones are hostile. These ones are hostile. This mod, um, the Apini, also adds a wasp race, which is hostile. And I don't remember what they're called. They have a slightly different name. Um... But like if I'm right here, this is a temperate swamp. And this is a minus three to 38. All of this is very warm. I really wanted a colder biome. Uh, savanna, temperate forest. It's up here. This is tundra, which as you can see goes from minus 50 to 26. That's pretty insane. It was like a boreal forest. Ah, here we go. Cold bog, ice oasis. Ooh, don't like that. So yeah, keeping warm could potentially, well, just temperature is going to be very important for us. Also, obviously, that affects the growing zones quite a lot. I actually quite... It has caves. I'm scared to start on caves, even though insects are going to be a big part of this. I'm a little nervous to actually... Uh, I don't... Like... It's almost kind of perfect, though, isn't it? Uh, I don't want a, like, I don't want too much of the map taken up by mountain. It is very cool. And I think it's good to have it installed, but for what I'm looking for, I really want something. Uh, what about a river? Oh, wow. That's a really cool valley map. Uh, and another one. Noticing a theme here. <laughs> I'm thinking of this. Okay, because it only has limestone and slate. I like just having two stones. Temperature, minus 23 to 40. That's, I mean, that's, that's a range, right? That's going to require us to manage things. There's a little bit of water, but otherwise we should be able to grow more or less anywhere. There's going to be a lot of trees. We have a scattering of mountains, which should have resources in them. Yeah, that's the only thing, resources. We don't have the quarry mud, um, because I'm planning on using the deep drills, because obviously with deep drills, there's a chance of infestation, and guess what? Infestations are a big part of this. Um... It's taken me so long to decide. I just... <sighs> okay, we're going to take this one. We do have reroll, so we could reroll it a couple of times and see the something a little more along the lines. Sure, I like it. And I like that we're on a road. That's nice. All right, I'm doing it. Um, I'm going to load an Ideologen because I'm actually prepared. Um... Yeah, that's fine. With a hive, uh, objective is the hive, and member noun is the hive link. I, I'm not going to go through it. So these are our memes. 
uh, Gestalt, Gestalt, however you want to say it, they have shared mood. Now, this doesn't work exactly how I thought it did. I thought that it meant that the mood of everyone was averaged out across the colony, uh, which is, is not how it works. Um, basically, if most people are happy, everyone will get a mood boost for them being happy. If most people are upset, they get a debuff. Um, so basically, if people are happy, it's easier to keep them happy. If they're upset, it's harder to get them out of being upset. It's not quite what I was after, but, it, it, you know, it, it's fine. Uh, psychic focus, uh, power of the mind, blah, blah, blah. Basically, whoever has the strongest psychic link is in charge uh, because their mind dominates the others. That's kind of how I'm thinking of it. Mad scientists, which was added by vanilla, ex vanilla genetics expanded. Um, basically, there was this one or another, which was like careful, uh, careful experimentation, uh, where they accepted all of their genetic failures, whatever. No, we're, we're into some mad science. We're going to be creating, I don't know, sheep people, bear people, bear snakes, um, just bear everything. I wonder, I didn't think of it. I wonder if this is compatible with the Joris mod, because that would that would be crazy and very fun. And then we have Rancher because we can't, we can't grow. So I wanted the uh, bonuses to um, taming and training and harvesting from animals. So that's why we have that. And we also have a lot, which we'll get to later, but we have a lot of ways for our animals to help us out in, well, especially combat. And yeah, and you might be wondering why we don't have the... Can I do it without messing this up? Um, where is it? Insects, Insectoid Supremacy. Which I was definitely planning on doing, but when I was actually making the idea legend, the problem with this is... It, it gives you... If you harm an insect, they get a minus 10 debuff. Which isn't what we're about. We're... We are also insects. We are fighting insects. We are working with insects. I, it, it just was too much. It didn't quite work. I really wanted the insectoid him, but it yeah, it just it doesn't it didn't work how I thought it did. Sadly, um, so as part of the mad scientist thing, um, they get a minus five if we build turrets. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, I guess we'll try not to, but uh, we might we might have to build some tarts. Uh, genetic failures are shameful, which I haven't actually done anything with the genetic stuff yet. I was just making sure that the pack ran properly. Um, but my people got a minus 15 for this almost right away, and I don't know what caused it. I thought maybe one had wandered onto the map, and that's why they were upset. Um, but I couldn't find it, so... We'll keep an eye on this one. The minus 15 is pretty huge. And then we like, uh, we like experimenting on humanoids, obviously. So ranching obviously is important. Uh, we get happy if we have a lot of animals and again, big bonuses to working with animals. We love insect meat. We love insect jelly. Uh, I also have the mod which takes away the food poison chance from insect jelly. Just... Uh, it's, it might end up being a main kind of food source for us, and I just don't want them getting sick all the time. Um, if you want a in-law reason for that, when they released this experiment, they genetically engineered them to be able to process insect jelly without a problem. Okay, so our leader is the best sidecaster, which is forced. So if someone gets to the same level as our leader, they will take over. I think this is how this works. Not immediately, but it, it will happen. Um, genetic work speed. I don't really know what this does. It just increases the work speed at one of the tables. If you take the other meme, it speeds up a different one. I, that's fine. I don't think it does that much. Intense bigotry, obviously. If you're not in the hive, then you're against the hive. And then this is just from the Psy Focus. We're big on the Psy Focus. 
Okay, let me load up the characters and I'll come back to you. Okay, and here we go. So this is our subject 374, aka Bug Splat. They are clone farmed, obviously, grown, you know, as a as a clone in a in a lab. And as an adult, I chose Hypnocult Leader, but my idea is that because of their um, psychically hypersensitiveness, you know, they were they were the biggest and baddest and in this essentially mind control experiment, this this hive mind, um, they were chosen because of that strong uh what am I trying to say? That strong psychic power. Uh so Obviously, huge social influence from that psychic, mind-bending kind of stuff. Intellectual, they've been given a bunch of information and they, they're engineered to learn. So both of those very high, double passion both. And they've been given some small ability in combat just to, just to try and keep them safe. And so the rest of these are tribals. Um, one, so that they can you know, meditate at the Anima Tree to get those more psychic levels, but also just I like the idea of the Empire scooping up tribals from various locations and then, you know, using them to help further their experiments. So we have Green Tarsier, who is the Harvester, uh, very good with plants and animals and also knows a bit of medical, hardy, energetic, temperature tolerant, animal aficionado, you know, was a was a tribe child grew up working with animals knows a lot about their health and is even though we can't plant things we can still harvest things um and we obviously we needed someone good with animals so here they are and medical we needed someone with medical harvesters here warrior uh aka peza banca um is here to be a, a warrior bug he's real good at shooting um, unstoppable jogger, industrious, eagle-eyed, also good with animals, uh, not bad at construction, mainly due to his physical prowess, and, you know, he's going to be our enforcer slash hunter. We have Blue Biko, who is basically just a drone, um, is going to do a lot of the cooking, uh, a lot of the constructing, they're okay at melee, and they have a little bit of artistic touch behind them. Um, those are not the traits I gave them. Ah, uh, I'm gonna have to revisit those. Uh, yeah, I'll do that in a second. That's weird. Did anyone else? No, these all look right. Huh. Um. Yeah, it just, okay, just that one for some reason went weird. Okay, I'll fix that in a minute here. Um, and then last of all, we have Skidder, uh, who is so named because that's the sound his fingers make when he's crafting, because, oh boy, is he a good crafter. He was an abandoned child and pretty much grew up making and working on things and went from village to village, doing odd jobs, living out rough in the wild. Just, just a real, real good, real good person to have around. So yeah, that's all of them. Let me fix uh, Drone here real quick. I'm not sure what happened to them. Okay, so I kind of just randomized uh, her traits until I got things that I felt kind of lined up. I can't remember exactly what I gave her before, uh, but psychically sensitive. Obviously, a drone, you know, has to be a little more under the under the cuff than some of the more proactive members. Uh, decent learner, uh, you know, can pick things up, knows how to do them efficient again drone super immune and animal aficionado we're gonna have a lot of animals it's just a nice trait and as you can see we this is a really strong start and that's intentional because again we can't grow anything and there's a lot of insects around and we have to hunt basically for all of our food and we have to travel out and at attack people and go to the so when I was testing I had one of the quests for um the genetics labs and so I went to it just to see what it is the the structures are amazing it was huge and there was stuff everywhere it looks really cool um I, 
I'm just thinking if we could have generated one of those structures and used that as our starting base, that would have been really cool. Um, it doesn't really fit with our theme, but it would have been cool. But there was a thrombo... I don't remember what it was crossed with, but there was a thrombo cross there, which just annihilated me. So we do have to bear that in mind. Even if we get one early, it might be better to wait. Um, those are bridges. Uh, just because there can be some really nasty things there. Uh, even early on, it does not pull punches, it turns out. Which is a good thing to learn before I started this. I'm looking around, I was hoping there might be an ancient danger somewhere. Obvious. Um, but it doesn't seem like it. I don't see any around. Okay, I'm going to do the usual stuff. Uh, you know, just get myself set up here and uh yeah i'll come back to you when i when i know how we're gonna how we're gonna set up here so i've decided this little structure here is where we're gonna start um there's not really a lot remarkable on this map which just reminds me we do actually have to re-roll so we could have re-rolled it a couple of times um uh, maybe it's not too late Where's the anima tree? Because that's a big... It's over here. Is that something I can re-roll? Uh, also the geysers, because we're probably going to have to build over a geyser to survive the winter. Very close to the edge. Which, I mean, isn't the end of the world? But if I want to use the anima tree, I should probably be over here. There is this as well. So we could build around this. Then we build... Basically, we'd probably end up building like this. Yeah, okay. No, we'll we'll keep it. We'll keep it. We'll, we'll stick with what Randy gave us. So we will move over there. This is going to be our initial shelter, but I want to very quickly build a um, hive chamber or main chamber of our hive. I want to do like a superstructure base, but with... Um, here, let me show you. I know what I'm thinking. Uh, I don't know. So, like, chambers like this. Right? Like like you would expect to see in a ant colony or whatever, and then um, just linking them all together with corridors, you know, something like this. Uh, this is a really bad way to show what I mean, but I think you get the idea, right? Like, just all linked together, all these kind of chambers and corridors. It's going to be very inefficient. Uh, I can guarantee you that, but... I, I think it'll look really... Uh, I hate... Designator shapes is so useful, but I it's so finicky to use sometimes. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So yeah, so I want to make that central chamber shortly, uh, but let's get set up here first. I claimed all this, right? Yeah, so... We also claimed this table. So that's real good. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's two degrees outside, which is very cold. But from my testing, this should jump up to like 30 very soon. Uh, because we should just be starting in spring. Let's build a campfire. And let's build steel walls just for some uh, insulation. Okay, so let's immediately do put your creature... Hello. Thank you. Forever. And, um... Make sure they're only getting things from nearby so they don't run across the map. Um... We'll leave this off for now. So... Just to warn you, we do have Dead Conserve. Which is a really cool mod. It lets you do things with corpses, and I thought that fit really well in with, like... You know, the hive aspect of this. We don't have a funeral ritual. Um, oh, which reminds me, I didn't really show you the the other stuff in the 
uh, idea legend, did I? Uh, so we looked through all of this. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So death is normal. Um, oh, yeah, so it looks like things did keep most of their names. So we do have three relics. Uh, Abathur, which is an insect skull. Uh, Carapace, which is some insect armor. And then Stinger, which is an acidic spear, which is from the Apini mod. Um, I don't actually know if humans can use it. It's a, I know that they can't use some of the things, but, but we'll see. And we have a drum party, skittering celebration. We have a cure disease ritual. I thought that might be handy. Um, just in case we get some hideous disease that we don't have the medicine for. And then uh, a feast. And we do get some rewards from these. Uh, but they're, they're kind of secondary. So we can't grow anything. We can harvest wild things. Um, so let's grab all these berries. That's a lot of berries. That's a lot, a lot of berries. Yeah, I'll take them all. And because, uh, like, even, like, we can't even make growing zones. That's how this works. So, yeah, so even if I wanted to, I, I can't make anything. Okay, and it's warm inside, so they shouldn't die of frostbite just yet. Uh, I do want two recurve bows to start hunting with. Let's get those. Skitter's going to work on those, which is good because he's the best. Um, you can see it's already warming up. So, yeah. Summer and spring, it's going to be very warm. Um, and then for winter, we definitely want to move over here to this geyser. Uh, even if we get some tribal wear, it's probably not going to be enough for the, like, minus 50 degree weather. Oh, we're also using simple storage and deep storage, which I've never used before. Um, where is that? Storage, 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 storage. Uh, so at the moment, we only have the food baskets, more unlocks as we, um, as we go, but... Oh, this It's just really cool. It's a really nice way of handling storage. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> okay, we don't want to annoy that. That will kill us very quickly. Oh, which I guess this is from Alpha Animals, uh, which... Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, there you go. Which is compatible and has crossover with Genetic Rim, so... That's why it's in here, and I can't wait for it to kill us. Because there is... Uh, it's called Mimes, so you get a Wanderer Joins event, but they're not human, they're a creature in disguise, and they attack you. It's... I have died several times to it in the past, and I normally disable it, but I thought this time... Just just to go with the theme, we'll let them, I'll let them work. I'll let them do it. Um, basic Prosthetics... Yeah, so this is the earliest dead can serve. Basically, you create a dummy, which is a crucifix. It's it's pretty dark. But yeah, we'll, we'll use that as we see fit. There's a lot of stuff which won't attack us back, which is nice. So let's just... Let's take out a herd. Oh, and look at that. Our first research already finished. Now, this is all the Apini stuff. I don't think we can use it unless we have an Apini colonist. But again, we'll see. We have to research it to get it out the way. So uh, it's also worth noting, uh, if you've ever played with Ignorance is Bliss, there is another mod called Arcane Technology, which you can a lot of the time you combine them together so that you can't use anything until you've researched it. So like if someone dropped a gun and you hadn't researched guns, you couldn't use it. Um, and then you combine that with Ignorance is Bliss so that you don't get raided by people above your tech level. So basically the world progresses along with you, which is quite cool um, and forces you to make things on your own or at least research things on your own. Uh, we're not doing that. We just have Ignorance is Bliss. So and if I'm right, if I remember how I set it up, when we re research 50% of a tech level, that becomes our tech level and we can be raided by one above. So 
say we research 50% of the medieval texts, which there isn't a ton of. We are then medieval, which means we can be raided by industrial. So they stay a little bit ahead of us, but yeah, we we should be able to handle it. And that's also why I have Vikings and the Me vanilla expanded medieval in here, um, because by default, there is no medieval factions in RimWorld. It's tribal and then industrial basic furniture would be very good. Yeah, take that. This was in 1.2 years. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. That's incredible. And then you just can use the smoked meat like a regular ingredient in meals and stuff. Yeah, so we're trading a little bit of work and they can eat it raw. Why did you eat that raw? They got a bonus for it? This is... Oh, okay. This is a little overpowered. Um... Nice. <laughs> I didn't look at this one. Smoked meat? Uh... Gold? I, I might have to see if I can tone that down a little. That's a little... That's a little much. Because you basically take meat, it cooks very quickly, it lasts for over a year, and they get a mood boost for eating it. That's... that's... that's very powerful. Uh, why don't you make me... Well, let's make five tribal wares. Honestly, we need to make... They're hoods. We have hoods. Look at how much we have, and we haven't even started yet. Um, hood? No, we don't have a hood. I need some kind of hat that will keep you warm. People like even this. Look, veil. Oh, 20 ingredients. But it's wool or cloth, and we can't grow cloth, so we can only make like leather. Double <laughs> headdress? Could this be leather? Nope. Um, these are. Okay, these will take leather. Do they give us any bonus to insulation? They do. Is there a difference between this and the bear? Um, not especially. Let's just make a couple of each and they can decide what they want to be. Uh, when we get to it, I definitely want to be wearing the insect helmets. They look very cool. But I mean, it's, it's whatever. Should we tame the muffalo? They're a bit of a pain to keep. This is the other thing. We can't even grow hay for them to eat. We have to feed them actual food. Or we just leave them in a pen. But in the winter, nothing's going to grow because it's going to be minus 50. What if we try and just get a nice breeding pair of muffalo? That's a female. I don't like a younger male. Nine, five, eight. Tame this one. Tame this one. We'll start with those two. We'll see where we go from there. Oh, we need to we need to have a name. Uh, I didn't really think of a name. I mean, uh, what should our faction be called? We we'll call them Zerg. That'd be a little on the nose. Um, uh, I don't know. Bugs life. Pixar's A Bug's Life? Or, wait, okay, I got it. The bug life doesn't choose you. <laughs> or you don't choose the bug life, the bug life chooses you. Uh, and what should this be called? Let's just call it The Hive. Keep it simple. If anyone has a better idea, please let me know. <laughs> I, do, I do like the bug life, though. Uh, we probably don't have anything we can actually... Eat these with. Okay, everyone should be clothed. Never 
reminds me. Let me turn off. This is a good tip, just in general. Um, because a lot of times when someone's crafting something, if it takes a long time, um, they'll stop and they'll go and put it away. And then in the meantime, while it's away, someone else will start one and you end up with just a whole bunch of these unfinished um, things lying around. Just any stockpile, don't allow unfinished things. So when they wander off, they won't take it away. They'll leave it on the spot. So when someone else comes to do it, they'll check for unfinished things first, see it's right there and start working on it. It's just a lot better than having them constantly restart things, especially expensive projects later in the game. It, it, it can be really annoying. And it takes 40 smoked meat to make one meal. 40 times 0 0.05 is new nutrition. So we're taking two nutrition worth of meat make 0 0.9 nutrition worth of meals, which only gives us half the bonus that this would. So basically we can eat half as much and have double the bonus if we just eat the raw meat. Or not the raw meat, the smoked meat. Ay, Rimworld, sometimes you worry me. Okay, everyone's idle. Yeah, but like, as I was saying, look at this research. It doesn't matter. We just need to crack these out. None of these are that useful. Okay, I can't do stone cutting. I can make steel walls. We have 700 steel. What size structure would that get me? Uh, in terms of a circle. If I put it, say... And I want a big chamber. 560 will get me this. Building inside this area gives you a penalty to... Um, what am I trying to say? A penalty to how fast the grass grows while you're meditating, but it's capped at 30%. So the time you save walking back and forth and like this, have it, keeping the animatry safe it's just a lot, it's a lot easier to just build in here and just take the 30%. You can also build like nature shrines to offset it, but it's, it's don't worry about building inside the circle, basically. Okay, so. Because basically what I'm thinking is, what am I thinking? I don't know, I don't do thinking that often. Um, uh, hello? I'm thinking we do this. This is our main chamber. And then this will be a chamber. It's annoying that it can't be centered. Can it be centered? I think it could be centered. We can just do something like this, and then... Look, this might change, because I'm not convinced immediately <laughs> by this. It looks awful, but... I don't, I don't know. We'll see. It's a start. And again, we're close to the anima tree. We're gonna have a big central chamber. This is this will be power eventually, but for now it's warmth. Or it will be warmth. Wow, look at them go. We need to put doors on it and a roof. But we can get to that. And obviously I don't want it made out of steel forever. Get rid of that. And let's get rid of some of this thing here.
reason you're not putting a hat on. Uh, because we don't have one. Okay, fair enough. our first raid. It's kind of weird not getting a countdown to it. Okay, you melee. I did consider taking out run and gun, but it just... I don't know, it feels weird to me that, you know, run and gun isn't a thing. Like, moving and shooting just seems so natural. I mean, I could make it so that they, um... So they get much bigger penalties if they're moving, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. All right, you can go home. Honestly, we'll probably just leave him here. Wooden Gladius, a steel axe. Yeah, probably not even worth picking up. We got our first muffalo. Uh, it's the male, so let's call it in honor of a bug's life. Ah, the Fleeing Duke. This we want, because this will get us our first psychic power. Uh, a Cactopine. That should be pretty good. And then we're just going to let... Don't sit there. The finest warriors in the Empire right here. There we go. You, you landed in my building. That's incredibly rude. And then we got our thing. Uh oh. Yeah, this is why you don't trap a bear inside your house. Um. Go this way. Hold these open. Oh, nice one. Didn't realize you were right there. Oh, it ran away. Oh, well don't, don't run away. Yeah, grizzly bear, you can't handle the bug life. Yeah, I know. Please bring it down. They'll make a lovely bed. Well, I'm gonna cut it off here, let them get this set up. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed my intro, basically, to this series. I know this is, you know, a very early RimWorld. The beginning often looks very similar, um, but I'm excited. I'm, I feel like this is gonna be a very interesting and very story-driven uh, uh, campaign. I think this is this could be really interesting and fun, and especially with the genetic rim stuff. I've only read through uh, the stuff on the Steam page. I haven't looked into anything else about how it works, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of mistakes and some hideous, hideous creatures roaming around this map very shortly. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.